In this video, we are going to learn how to use XY joystick with ESP32 and ESP32 extension board from SunFounder and detect the position, and as you can see it on the screen. And also, in the next, in the second session, we are going to add a buzzer. So when we move it in a certain position, the buzzer, the buzzer buzzes and we can take action. ESP32 starter kit from SunFounder. This is the best ESP32 learning kit from SunFounder. It has this ESP32 microcontroller which has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. This board can do everything Arduino Uno can do or many other Arduinos can do, plus extra more features. Because we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the possibilities are endless. You can get connected to the cloud or do the control or read information or values via your mobile device or your desktop or over the cloud from a far location. It comes with a camera extension kit where you can stream the video over Wi-Fi either through the cloud or to your network. And also it comes with micro SD card where where you can save uh, images on the micro SD card or you can write from the device any information, log the information on the device and read it back. You can power the board using this included 18650 lithium battery and it has built-in charger where you can connect micro USB and charge the battery. The kit comes with 320 pieces of component that you can learn tons of projects. Today we are going to learn about this joystick or sometimes called as XY joystick because it is collecting data in X direction and in Y direction. And it also has a switch that when you click it, you can detect and take some action based on the click. This has a lot of application in games. You have seen it in every game. A device something like this exists that you can move and also click. Come to this page, docs.sunfounder.com, scroll down until you see ESP32, then click on ESP32 Starter Kit Main. On the left side, click on Arduino User, and then scroll, scroll down to 5.11, toggle the joystick. There is some explanation about joystick. We need our ESP32 module. We need ESP32 camera extension module, jumper wires, and then the joystick itself. And we could use for analog one of these pins. As you can see in the schematic, we are using 34, 35 for analog, so these two. And then one pin here, the 33 for the switch and we are connecting it to 3.3 volts and ground. And here is the wiring, which I'm going to explain it later. This is the code for the joystick. We will have one extra code that I'm going to show you to take action based on value. If I click on this joystick module icon, here is the explanation. We have ground, which will be connected to ground, and then 5 volts. This says 5 volts, but you can connect it to 3.3 volts, to 5 volts. In this case, we are using 3.3 volts. And, and then we have this uh, tooth line. One is labeled as VRX. That's a voltage of resistor in X direction. And then voltage of resistor in Y, because we have two resistors inside it. And then we have a switch. When we push it, we can read the value. The switch here, you can see it. If I remove it, this is a switch. Every time you press it, this is clicking here and establishing connection. First, this is a variable resistor. When I move this, you see the handle, it just rotates. It doesn't go like 180 degrees. Perhaps this is just going about less than 90 degrees and we can read the value. And we have in Y direction also there is another one. And it's, it's labeled as 103, 
that that three means three zero, so ten and then zero three, ten thousand. This is ten kilo ohm, and this is also ten kilo ohm. We already have learned about this variable resistor in the previous lesson. This is exactly the same as this one, except the shape is different. But the functionality we have the same variable resistor, and also here this is also variable resistor. The same thing is there, except this has a knob, and if I remove it. You can see it better. We have three pins, and from here to here, inside there is a carbon, and this is 10 kilo ohm, and the middle one will slide on the on top of this. So when we go to the left, we get minimum from these two pins, for example, if you measure, and when you go to the right, you get maximum value. Switch here. When let me put this back. When you push it, pay attention here, we are just pushing that push button and we are reading it through this SW switch. For the X, for the X and Y also we have pens which I've shown you in the diagram. And then 3.3 volt is connected to the two variable resistor and we need ground as well. We need the ground for the switch and variable resistors. This is the wiring. Uh, internally, we have one 10 kilo ohm resistor, which is connected to the Y variable resistor. So we have one 10 kilo ohm resistor for Y direction, which has three pins. We already spoke about this variable resistor. There is a resistor, and it has a middle pin, which you can slide between zero to maximum. And we have another resistor, variable resistor. It's for the X. And then we have switch. All of these have a common ground. This variable resistor is connected to the ground, which is connected to this point, to the X, and which is connected to the switch. So we have only one wire for these three. And then from the middle of Y uh, variable resistor, we have one wire. And then from the middle of X, we have another wire. And from the switch, we have another wire. Now, we have a VCC. These two VCC will be connected to 3.3 volts. So we have one more pen. All these steps, one, two, three, four, five, these are the pens for this, which are shown here. I'm using this KWIT KM601. I've done the full review. If you want to purchase it or watch the video, the link is below the video in the description. Now, if I connect my tips between ground and VCC, I should get five kilo ohm. You see, we are reading 4.7 or 4.5 kilo ohm. Let me press hold. So now it's hold. 4.5 kilo ohm. So 4.5, because this is in parallel, if you multiply it, it will be 9 kilo ohm. So this is about 10% tolerance. So that's correct. When you use ESP32 with SunFounders ESP32 camera extension module like this, it comes also with a battery on the package and it comes a built-in charger so you can connect it and charge it and disconnect and later on you can use it with a lot of power so you can power up your application very easily. Let's do the wiring. I'm following the same color as the diagram so we will not make mistake available here and first these two the ground and uh, the ground will be connected to the last pin and then red will be connected to 3.3 volts I'm going to use this uh, connector to secure it so they don't disconnect by mistake and then we have these three for these three let's have a look here at, at this point the switch the switch is the last one switch is connected to pin 33 
So orange goes to 33. And 33 is the span here. So 33. We have 34 and 35. And then we got we got VRY green is connected to 35 here this green goes to 35 and the X blue goes to 34 Between the 34, uh, 35 and 33, we have one empty spot, which is 32. The wiring is now completed. I'm opening Arduino IDE. I'm opening Arduino IDE. Let's open our project by clicking on File. Open, on the left side click on Downloads, then ESP32 Starter Kit Main on the right side, double click to open it, double click on C, double click on Codes, and then scroll down until you see 5.11, 5.11 joystick, double click on this folder to open it, select 5.11 joystick, file and click Open. Now, here we have three lines. We have defined pin 34 for X axis. This is a variable name, and when we put define here, it makes it the same type because it's integer. Automatically, it will detect it as integer and makes it uh, constant so it cannot change. And 35 is Y axis, and 33, 33 for the button or switch. Inside the setup, we are initializing. A serial monitor with 115,200 and we are just defining the button switch or push button using pin mode as input. Pay attention with, that we do not define the analog pins because we are reading the voltage. We do need definition. They are already available. Inside the loop, we are using analog read and x-axis. This is the value which is between 0 to 4095 and that is because it's 12 bits let's save it and we are so the, the result of this value which is a value between 0 to 4095 will be stored in a variable called x value and read we read the value and it is stored in a variable called y value of type integer both of these and then we use the button value. If the button is pressed, we use digital read. And the button, this is a pen. And the value is either 0 or 1. And we are storing it in a variable called button value. This is the pen 33. And this line is just printing all of them at once. We use print F serial print f and then this d means uh, we have a digit and then comma another one another one so we get the joystick first value second value third value in order they appear here the first value is x value because we have a comma here this double quotation from here to here ends and then comma so this is all text and these are all variables but this is referring to the x value, this is referring to the y value, and this is re referring to the button value. And we have 300 millisecond delay, and the loop will continue to uh, do the same thing over and over again. Now let's see how we can select the ESP32 board. We can click here under the select board. And type here 
ESP32 DEV. As soon as you type dev, you will see dev board. You can select it and click OK. So the board have been selected. Now we have to select the port. The, the other way to select the board is click on tools, board, ESP32, and select the ESP32 dev module. Now we have to select the port. If I click here, it shows two ports, and I don't know which one belongs to my device. Sometimes you will see, you will not see the number properly. So the best way to be sure, the right click on the Start menu, go to the Device Manager, and you will see here the ports. If I click on this arrow, it will show me the ports. One is USB Serial CH340, one the other is USB Serial Device. And here, now it's connected. If I disconnect this, one of them disappear. The one that disappeared is my board. So six stays and it disappeared. If I connect it, so it is my COM port, CH340. Now it is my COM port and I can select it. Or I can click on tool, port, and here you will see it. You can select whichever you want. Ours is COM8. Now we have successfully selected the board and the port. And this is very important. It must be done first. When you use ESP32 Learning Kit from SunFounder, it comes with this extension board, which has built-in charger, and it comes with lithium battery. This is 18650 lithium battery, where you can charge it via, via micro USB. Everything is included, and you can power up your project very easily. The link to purchase this learning kit is below the video in the description. To upload the code, and the code is uploaded after that, Click on the serial monitor in here, and as you can see, we are reading a value, joystick value with all these. So this is, one is X, the other is Y, and then one is for the switch. If, if pay attention that this 115,200 must match the same value as we have here. For example, if you have 9,600, you will see some characters that is not readable. So this number must match here. And our serial monitor is now working perfectly. And here, the joystick is ready. This is very nice because it's secure. And now let's see which value. These values are the average because the joystick is at the middle. Now if I go forward, just see. This is Y. And you can see the Y goes to 0. So that side is all 0. Pay attention, this was zero, and if I come here, it goes to the maximum, 4,095. And now if I go left, that is zero. X became zero here, pay attention. And now if I go to the right, this value, the X will increase, because I'm going in the X direction, 4,095. So we can do X, Y. But the beauty of this is that we can go somewhere between X and Y at the middle. If I come here, you see we are reading 4095 for both. If I rotate it, one value will change the other value. So you can go somewhere between and between X and Y, and we can read it continuously and do something. Now the last action that I have to demonstrate is the switch. Now if I press it, we read zero here. Pay attention. I'm doing it with one hand and showing you with mouse. So correct, zero and one. So remember that uh, when we do, do not press, we always read here one and then zero. The reason for one is because this pen is already something called pull up. Here is a code where we can take action. This portion is exactly the same and I've added a alarm pen so we can turn on the buzzer. And I've defined these variables outside to these are called global variable because they are not inside the void and they are not inside the loop. Uh, so we can update them and set the value for X, value for Y and I've added this one called switch value. Inside the setup, I've just added this line extra 
I've defined alarm pin as output so we can connect buzzer or something else to it. And inside the loop, we are reading them separately. First, we are reading x value, store it in this variable, and then we read a y value and store it in this variable, and we read button value in this variable. And after that, I'm printing them one by one. So this is just printing the text x and then the value of x, text y and the value of y. None of them have uh, ln, so they're all side by side and switch value. And we have 50 millisecond delay, so this can respond very quickly with comparing to the previous example. And this is the action section. Here we say if x value is greater than 600, these two ampersand mean and, so this condition and this condition must be true, which says y value should be less than 600. So if x is above 600, it will not work. y must be also less than 600 in order for this to print alarm on the screen and turn on the buzzer using digital write alarm pin high. So this will send 3.3 volts to that pin and then else we don't print anything on the screen, just turn off the buzzer. And this was a full code. Now let's upload the code. The code is uploaded. Let's open serial monitor. So as you can see, y is x value is displayed, y is displayed. It's, it's going very fast because we have 50 millisecond delay and switch is also not activated. Now I'm going, let's say, to the left. Nothing happens. Y, let's see for the condition. Because the value must be greater than 600 and y should be less than 600. Now x is not greater than 600 and y is not that's why let's go to the uh, forward and as you can see x is greater than 600 and y is less than 600 that's why and if i bring it left right it doesn't work except that value that we set now 800 and y should be greater than 1,500. So let's upload the code. And and our values are there. So we said if it is x is less than 800, and this should be less than 1500. If I go x, x less than 600, and y greater than 1500. Now this is x, if I go less than 800, because it's greater than 1500, it buzzes. And also, we see alarm on the screen. Nothing happens if I go anywhere else except that corner. And if you want to have, let's say, 4,095, now I'm changing it greater than 4,000. And 4,000, upload the code. And the code is uploaded. Now if I come here, and if I go there, it's zero, zero, nothing happens, but 4,095 to the right and below. That's why it's above 4,000 and it buzzes. So excellent, you can use it for your uh, application.